we retired here when I gave up farming and we were always interested in green energy and green agriculture and in place was this water wheel at this 400 year old water mill. Our first thoughts were to harness the power from the, the wheel itself. It's a large wheel, 14 feet diameter, 4 feet wide and it gives us three and a half horsepower. The downside is that the bearings are many centuries old. In fact, they're non-existent. They are just copper bushes and it is very noisy. And my wife and I sleep just above it. So that ruled out using the wheel and we set about using the water that was available for the wheel to put down a pipe and use a modern turbine, a mini hydro turbine. And that is what we have done. The amount of electricity that we can get out of this mill laid is a product of the height between where the water enters the pipe feeding the turbine and the exit chamber below the turbine. Now this on this setup is about six meters and we have available something like 100, 110 liters per second going down that pipe. Um, we could make more electricity if 400 years ago they had built a larger underground laid um, across the road. So it's, it's a case of we were lucky to have in place most of the structure that was needed but we were restricted by the size and amount of water that was arriving at the top of the water wheel and under the top of the turbine. Energy Saving Trusts was the uh, government body that I applied to for the grant and they suss out the project. You have to have a specialised installer. You can't do it entirely yourself. I picked one in Cumbria, Turbine Services, and I had to submit uh, estimates of what the whole project was going to cost. It came down to a figure of about £13,000 and the Energy Saving Trust offered me a 30% of that which was just under 4000 and that is what I was paid once the project had been completed. For every kilowatt that we produce we get a rock which is now up to 9 pence per kilowatt which we get from Good Energy, our electricity supplier. The turbine produces 60 kilowatts per day when the burn is in full spate at a rate of 2.6 kilowatts per hour. And we basically use that to keep the old mill heated. A steady 2 kilowatt input of heat from radiators keeps this small three-bedroomed mill house very adequately warm. It's only in periods of very great frost that we need to supplement the heat. But otherwise we are basically self-sufficient and most days we will only take two or three kilowatts out of the grid, which is when um, a shower or a microwave or an electric cooker is turned on for short periods. And of course there are days when we are not producing two and a half kilowatts. As the water falls away we can go right down until we're generating one or even less than one. Still usable and still worthwhile because it's not costing us. The, the water is there to be used. Usually we have water available September, October, right through to May. This is a 
extraordinary year in that we've had a lot of rain in August. The other time, funnily enough, when we stop being able to make electricity was when there is a hard frost. As you would realise, the waters drop and the whole thing can freeze up. The most arduous task I found was acquiring a micro turbine. There are still people in Britain making large scale turbines, but for one of this size, which only uses 100 plus litres per second, we had to go to Pennsylvania and the importation and the setting up of the importation did take up to a year. And of course there is the problem that if you do have any breakdowns you're needing to bring spares in from America for the actual turbine. The dynamo or generator that the turbine drives is made in this country so you have no problems with that. Maintenance of the turbine is, is minimal. It has supposedly got at least a seven to ten year life. It has three grease nipples which I give a shot of grease to every month, the first of every month. Water comes from the Shermer's burn, goes into a mill pond, it then comes down the side of the road and arrives at this tank here made by my local blacksmith and on the top of that is a mesh. Undoubtedly you do not want leaves to get into it. It really does reduce your output very very considerably. The problem with leaves of course rears its ugly head in September, October when the ash trees drop an enormous number of leaves and I have to clean that cyber, the sieve there, probably twice a day. Um, but it is probably just over the period of one month. We have a fairly sophisticated box of tricks which allows our turbine to be grid connected. You can have a very basic setup where you just make electricity probably at 12 volt DC and store it in batteries or you can have a what they call an inverter actually which will turn 12 volt DC into 230 AC and you could then work seven and a half kilowatt showers and things like that from it but the cost of that is quite high and the cost of lead batteries for storage is even higher so I went for the cheaper option of straightforward AC at two and a half kilowatts use it or lose it if you use this sophisticated machine it is 230 volts and it is synchronized with the electricity in the grid. Having then had this synchronized electricity, we can, if we so wish, sell it back to good energy via the grid. To do that, you need an export meter, which obviously costs a certain amount and which I haven't invested in as yet. Basically, we use it ourselves but there are times when we're making probably two and a half kilowatts and we're only using two kilowatts. And so it's use it or lose it at the moment. What we don't use goes straight back into the, into the grid and I'm donating it to the nation. <laughs>